You can totally make a sugar-free matcha latte that still tastes amazing, and I'm here to show you how. This is how I drink my matcha latte nearly every day. First, I'm gonna go over five different tips for how to make a sugar-free matcha latte taste delicious, and then I'll demonstrate exactly how to make one. For my first tip, you wanna start with high-quality matcha powder. If you dump a bunch of sugar into your latte, sure, you can get away with a lower-quality matcha powder, but when you go sugar-free, it's a good idea to purchase a higher-quality matcha powder. In general, in the US, matcha comes in three different grades or qualities. The highest quality is called ceremonial grade, the middle quality is called latte grade, and the lowest quality is culinary grade. The ceremonial grade is less bitter and it can even have a hint of sweetness to it, so if you can afford it, I definitely recommend getting ceremonial grade. Now I did an entire video blind taste testing 14 different matcha powders, so make sure to check that out if you're trying to find a good matcha powder. But if you just like a quick recommendation, I would say start with either the Thrive Market ceremonial grade, Encha ceremonial grade, or Mizuba culinary matcha. My my second tip is to use whole milk or cream to make your matcha latte. Again, you may be able to get away with skim milk if your drink is really sweet, but fat makes things taste delicious and the creamy texture is wonderful. I actually used to always make a matcha breve with part whole milk and part cream, but these days I just use whole milk. I find that the matcha flavor shines through really well with the whole milk. My third tip is to heat your milk to the proper temperature. When milk is heated, it actually tastes sweeter. This is because the sugars in milk break down into simpler sugars when heated, and that makes it easier for you to taste the sweetness. The ideal range to heat milk is somewhere between 145 and 155 degrees Fahrenheit. If you go over that temperature, the milk can take on a cooked egg flavor, which is not pleasant. My fourth tip is to froth or steam your milk. Frothing milk gives it a really nice, thick, creamy texture. If you don't own an espresso machine, make sure to check out my video guide for how to froth milk without one. My last tip is to add a splash of vanilla extract. Certain flavors signal sweet to our brains. Usually vanilla extract is paired with something sweet, so when you add it to your latte, it helps to signal that this is a sweet drink. And besides that, it just adds a lovely flavor to your drink. Okay, now that I've gone over those tips, let me show you how to make a delicious sugar-free matcha latte. Place two bamboo scoops or one teaspoon of matcha powder into your mug. Pour one tablespoon of hot water over the matcha in your mug. Now make sure that your water is no more than 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Now use a bamboo matcha whisk to blend the water with the matcha powder until smooth. Yes, this can be accomplished with a regular whisk. However, the bamboo matcha whisk does a much better job of blending it all together so that there's no clumps. First, I swirl the water and the matcha powder together with the whisk to make sure that the matcha is submerged under the water. Then I use a quick back and forth motion with the whisk for 20 seconds to ensure that there are no clumps of matcha powder left. At this point, you can add a few drops of vanilla extract. I've actually been skipping this lately, but it does add a lovely flavor to your matcha latte. Then you can give it a little whisk to mix it in. And make sure to rinse off your whisk right away to prevent stains. Next, heat your milk to around 150 degrees Fahrenheit and froth it. Now I own an espresso machine, so that's what I use to heat and froth my milk, but I didn't own one for years and I just used a hand pump milk frother to froth my milk and that worked great. So I would just heat it over the stove, pour it in here and then froth it. Now, if you don't care about latte art, you can just pour your warm frost milk over the matcha and water mixture. But if you'd like to practice your latte foam art, then pour a little bit of the frost milk into the mug first. Then mix it with a spoon until everything is evenly distributed. And now you can attempt your pour. Like I said, I drink this nearly every morning because I love the flavors and the ritual. All right, if you have any questions, make sure to leave me a comment and check out this video next to get my best matcha brownies recipe. Shut up. To get my mess, my mess, but I didn't own one for years and ugh.